my door. Where are we going? Notre Dame, and then catacombs. We already had our buffet breakfast, ready to tackle the day. <laughs> there it is. Where's Quasimodo? We were lucky enough to catch the bell toll. Listen. It looks beautiful in here during Christmas time. But as stunning as the Notre Dame was on the inside, I've just seen so many churches at this point that it's difficult for me to spend too much time in appreciating each one. So off to our next stop, which we got a reservation for. But of course, before that, we're grabbing a quick bite. Doug and I stumbled upon this small and lovely bakery called Moisson. The strawberry brioche. Mm -hmm. Bruschetta. Bruschetta, courgette, zucchini. Does the bruschetta and brioche look amazing? Well, it was as cold as the weather outside. And to be honest, was not that great. You know what? Let's not dwell on that mistake anymore. Besides, our next stop was something I was really excited about. Dun, dun, dun. So we're going down 130 steps. Warning. It's going to get a bit dark. Literally dark inside the catacombs, but also, some viewers may find the video clips I'll be showing to be a bit disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Never thought I'd get to say that. The belly of Paris, the food market, is 50 meters from this rotting cemetery. The catacombs were underground tunnels in Paris that were used to store the bones of over 6 million Parisians. At one point, the cemeteries of Paris were overfilling with corpses. That pus was starting to ooze from the walls of the city. So they buried them down here. Good thing Doug and I ate before this tour. You think you'd be scared about the skeletons of the dead, but what's really weird is what the living have done down here. We learned during our tour that there were parties and balls hosted down here. It housed both the French resistance and the Nazis during World War II. But it's also had its fair share of criminals and cannibals. At least they hung out in the less traveled tunnels of the catacombs if that makes you feel better. It's really hard not to get goosebumps being down here. I'd freak out when I'd take a few seconds to take pictures and before I know it, Doug and the whole tour group would be nowhere within my sight. Plus, there's Latin writings everywhere. Anything in Latin reminds me of scary movies. It freaks me out. How creepy was that? It was pretty really creepy. It's so creepy. It's super informative, but there were a lot of creepy parts. Like, I would have been really creeped out if you didn't have a tour guide. Our next stop was the Louvre, which is the world's largest art museum. Think Da Vinci Code and the Mona Lisa. This place is bougie. What's a trip to a museum with Doug and Janelle without stopping for snacks? Ha ha, there is an Angelina's inside the Louvre. Oh look, we're having the hot chocolate again. And Doug is having, what are you having? Uh, some green tea, black tea, green tea. It's a mix infusion, so there's spices and fruit in it. And I'm having my hot chocolate. Now just when we thought there were barely any tourists in the museum. Okay, we're getting closer to the Mona Lisa because we totally thought this museum was empty until we got here. Oh my god, there it is. It's so small. <laughs> oh my god, look at people pushing. It's like crazy. The Mona Lisa is underwhelming. Let's just say that. But we did find something fun from the Philippines. This is your dad. This is my dad. His name is Jerome. Oh, and I had no idea that the Louvre was once a medieval fortress. This is what it used to look like on the outside. After covering as much of the museum as we possibly could, we headed out for our dinner reservation. I love, 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 love Benoit. B stands for the best restaurant ever. I mean, look how cute and quaint it is inside. Doug chose this spot, and I am so glad he did. I mean, look at the menu. 
I was so torn between the hare, the calf's head, the deer, the doe, and the casserole with sweetbreads. To tip the scales, I asked the waiter. By the way, our waiter was hilarious and was a huge part of why we loved this restaurant so much. Look how much care they put in the presentation of their food. Doug ordered the wild boar, cooked in its own blood. Right. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. I mean, come on, wiping our plate? This place is amazing. That stuff is mashed celery to go with Doug's boar. At first, I was like, ew, celery? But obviously, you go to a great restaurant like this, you're going to love everything. Here's Doug's classic, I love this dish frown. Now here's what I got. The casserole with sweetbreads, coxcomb, kidneys, and foie gras. So soft. See how soft that is? Foie gras. This is the best dish ever. I'm so glad I got it. The waiter recommended it. Doug and I were super full at this point, but there was no way we were gonna pass up dessert. Ruby order. They are custard filled cream puffs served with a fancy scoop of vanilla ice cream. I'll let the profiteroles speak for themselves. What's inside? Can I Custard. see? <gasps> the, the custard came out. <laughs> Of course they'd be gone quick. But whatever are we going to do with the leftover pool of chocolate? They gave us Madeleine to dip in the chocolate. Mm. They also gave us chocolate and marshmallows. He gave us a little goodie bag. Mm -hmm. Benoit with the marshmallows or the madeleines. Super good. Really good. Really good. Super worth it. Absolutely. We were already bursting. He gave us madeleines. And then after that, he gave us a guimau, which is marshmallow. That you were like, just try it. And I was like, Ugh, I don't like marshmallows, but whatever. At first, I touched it. It was kind of like crunchy. I was like, ooh. And I bit into it. It was like honeysuckle and rose. The marshmallows here are really good, or maybe it's just Benoit, but I love this place. And our waiter is really funny. We love our waiter. Alright, now time to stumble home. We're tired.